Welcome to Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbithe Mwema. This week has been all about trying to understand what the budget means for different sectors. If this is the first time you're joining us, I hope you can be able to catch our previous episodes. We have looked at the macroeconomy, we have looked at fix, uh, fixed income as well as equities. Today, we are looking at the private equity sector, trying to understand the current budget reading as it stands. Are there any regulations? Are there new opportunities that have actually been brought about by the statement that was read last week by the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury, Okur Yatani? In studio, via video call, we are joined by Eva Warege. Eva is an executive director at the East Africa Venture Capital Association. Welcome to the show, Eva. Thanks for having me, Bita. It's good to be back. Okay. We can start off this conversation with what was your read through from the budget? Then now we can uh, take a step and look at the impact on private equity. All right. Um, I, I think for us as a start is to acknowledge that this budget was uh, perhaps different from previous budgets in that it wasn't a budget around the finance bill. It was actually an economic budget, an economic strategy budget. Um, in essence, the CS providing guidance as to how the government of Kenya is approaching the next 12 months in terms of economic protection and um, stimulation post-COVID, um, acknowledging that the finance bill had just been released about three weeks in advance. And so he did not spend as much time as he would probably have in previous years discussing the items in the finance bill, but rather he actually spent a lot of time talking about the economic stimulus that the government of Kenya was um, undertaking for the period. And if you recall, his uh, theme for the budget was econ improving the economic livelihoods and safeguarding jobs and um, revenue collection for the year 2021. So in as an economic strategy, as opposed to a traditional budget. Thank you so much for that oversight. And when we look at the private equity, what was what are the mentions? What are the key wins, um, the key possible risk factors or the key points of uncertainty from this um, budget reading? Okay, so to start with the positive um, is that there's a deliberate focus by the enhance the recover, recoverability of the economy, right? So we as private sector, not just private equity, but every other aspect of private sector is very conscious about how can we go back to what we term the normal business operations and to see the government coming out strongly to say that they acknowledge that's a concern and they're willing to support it was quite uh, a motivator for us, at least in private equity. Now, what were some of the risks? There are quite a number. Um, I will get to my number one, which is the minimum tax proposal of 1%. I have seen a few speakers on this show commenting about it, but um, acknowledging that revenue collection will continue to be a strain for the government. They have now introduced the 1% tax, minimum tax or turnover tax on uh, revenues above 50 million. Okay already too much burden uh, on the normal taxpayer. And I, I did some research. So up until 2010, pay as you earn, which is a, a, an income tax, was um, the leading contributor to KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority's um, um, collections. In 2018, or the year 2018-2019, value added tax became the number one. So the top taxes to date, Eight percent, um, pay as you earn, twenty six point six percent, and other income taxes, and this is corporate tax, withholding tax, and them um, cumulatively co 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 consists of twenty point one percent of revenue collected. Now, these are taxes on businesses that are already generating revenues, and then they 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 um, they're charged to 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 our goods and um, to the corporate and even the individuals in the corporate. Now, add to that is a taxation on revenue. So you're not really be paying four taxes. Uh, and this does not even add the excise duties that you have to pay on your. Um, so essentially, we feel that it's quite it's going to be a bit of a tough economic time for private companies. Uh, and this is just to put it very mildly. If you think about it, we were already overtaxed. 
as um, institutions that uh, were, were, were playing a part in growing the Kenyan revenue in terms of VAT, pay as you earn, and other corporate taxes. Now you add revenue. And for us as investors, the most solid number to look at when you're determining your investment case to a business is the earnings uh, or profitability, not the top line. So we already have to work with the, there's so many taxes in VAT, corporate tax, and pay as you earn. Uh, in determining the viability of a business to invest in. But now, also have to acknowledge that the top line, which has an influence on the profitability, is also being taxed. And that obviously will have a hand in how we consider the viability of businesses going forward. Essentially, we feel that it's a, a bit a risky a move for a, a for a government that is trying to um, recover the economy and stimulate growth within uh, private companies. A contradiction from the main statements. Thank you so much for that highlight, um, Eva. From your research and your analysis, are we in a space where we are saying companies are possibly becoming more efficient and reducing their reliance on labor as a means of generating revenue, but they're still selling? Because if you have a situation where pay is declining, but VAT is increasing, is it a space where the goods that are vatable have increased or are businesses actually selling more? That, yeah, businesses are increasing their production, but I think the reality, and you've seen it in previous years and commentary in when people have had to let go of employees just because they're, they could not sustain the workforce associated with the production. It, um, I mean, labor is one of the most expensive items on one's um, PL, right? So, if you're looking about cost cutting measures or improving your financial efficiencies, that is one area that companies, a lot of the companies, um, service sector and manufacturing, will consider to cut down labor. So, it could be an attribute that labor force has been impacted, which is why pay as you one went down and VAT went up. And now, actually, you will remember from the president's utterance uh, around March, he actually reduced the pay as you one from 30% uh, maximum to 25. And then he reduced VAT from 16% to 14%. So already those two are also going to reduce in their collections. Um, um, it's going to be a bit an interesting time to see how the government can plug that deficit. But as it is, um, those two were the leading collections for KRA, and uh, they also have a direct impact on how we do business in the private sector. All right. Thank you for that. Now, when we look at the private equity segment in, in this economy, there were a couple of pronouncements um, that were made by Okuri Atani, And in a way, he said that there needs to be oversight from the Capital Markets Authority. What's the current structure? What do these statements portend for the industry? Uh, he was uh, referencing a proposal in the Finance Bill 2020-2021 by the Capital Markets Authority, which seeks to create a provision for the CMA to regulate fundraising from public pension funds, or rather from public funds um, within Kenya by PE. So traditionally, We've had to fundraise by going through the RBA, which is the regulator for pension funds in Kenya. And for as long as um, the pension fund has provided in its investment policy its intention to invest in PE, the RBA then gives the go-ahead or would probably give comments around that. Where the RBA gives us that, you are allowed to invest in private equity. The pension fund then invests into the asset class private equity, but through licensed fund managers. It's not that we did not have oversight in the past, and this I think is a misconception that we have seen a few um, media houses uh, attempt to, 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 to shed light on. It's that when every time a pension fund had, had to invest in private equity, it had to get access through its fund manager, and those are listed by the CME. So um, it's also a bit unclear to us about what the regulation would entail, seeing as we already we already do have oversight through the, the, the fund managers, but we will just wait to see how we engage the CMA about the regulation. As it is, there's no regulation in place, so I think the first step for the CMA would be to now develop that framework of policy. Um, but it's something we continue to engage with them as the EABCA to make sure that it does not 
contract the available private capital coming into this market. Yeah. And apart from that, was there any other direct comment that affects your industry? Uh, so the minimum tax and the CMA uh, policy or introduction of the provision to regulate PE were the, the, the greatest that we uh, There was also the utterance on comment to support private-public partnerships as an incentive for private capital to get into government projects. Now, that is a very welcome move for us. Um, I think for private equity, we've always held that government can be a very good partner for us. They they have the leading pipeline, whether it's in infrastructure or social um, innovation and development, as well as um, their incentive to support SME actually works in our favor because then we are a bit more bold in the support we can extend to SME. So um, I, I recall they gave a commitment on how much the government will dedicate to PPPs, but also the willingness to bring private um, capital around the same table to look at PPPs is probably uh, a, a note of confidence that um, we now have an environment that would work for us uh, this time or going forward. So the PPP uh, support was also one that, that works for us. I think the other thing that the CS noted was the, the dedication for government to improve its efficiencies in serving um, the private sector, but or rather just improving its efficiency. And I think that's one of the frustration points for a lot of investors and private business owners that government doesn't seem to move fast, um, especially as it relates to pay making payments. Um, he spent quite a bit talking about um, settling debts or accounts that are owed by the government. So that was also another welcome move for us as people who are suppliers to government. Right. Eva, there was also mention of 10% uh, in uh, private equity from funds that are licensed by the CMA, which I understand is a 10% allocation by the underlying asset managers. Has this always been the case? Um, did the industry expect a different number? Or this is just neither here or there? Yes, that was on, uh, it's sort of a VAT introduced to investment securities and insurance, actually. To the best of my knowledge, it's one. Um, it's something we will look at closely. I understand there's been it's it's not as direct to the private equity space uh, notably because a lot of us have not been under cma in the past but it's something that would affect us because um, fund managers do invest some of their uh, their portfolios into alternatives that include private equity so we'll continue to monitor that and um i can't speak much about it right now because it's something that's very new even for the industry and then in terms of the big wins in the industries, we did see some reprieve and some measures extended, especially to manufacturing, to um, companies that are in the spaces of producing diapers and, and things like that. Are you excited by some of these measures? Do you see um, opportunities for investments from the private equity sector um, off the back of this budget reading? Yeah, um, so when you talk about private equity investing for as EABCA, we, we always say culture is a leading component of um, private capital inflows into East Africa, including Kenya. What people don't actually is not clear to many people is that when you refer to agriculture, it's actually value addition or agro processing. The movement from raw material to finished good. Um, finished goods within the supermarket. So in that sense, any anything that can support value addition within the agri value chain and beyond is a welcome move for us because it speaks to one of the target sectors. And this is not just for agri, it's also crossed into industrial manufacturing. So all in all, it's positive manufacturing one of the sectors that private capital likes um, just because uh, the, the value is actually something you that's tangible, um, its effect on employment, its effect on um, um, the country itself and ability to, to deliver finished goods in the market. Its expansion and adoption of technology is something that PE can be able to demonstrate value. So it's one of those sectors we love and we will look forward to, to, to working with and uh, taking advantage of the new opportunities that are there. Interesting. And then when it comes to fund inflows, based on your engagements, 
Is there excitement about funds looking for a place to, to for investments rather in Kenya after the budget reading? And I know your space looks at five, seven years and uh, it'd probably be a bit of, uh, it's too early to actually make that call. But has the sentiment changed from the investors and the investment groups that you're in, in as far as the investment case for Kenya is concerned? Uh, not much has changed. There's a bit of a concern, especially for the concerns around what does it in terms of legal risk. Um, but other than that, I think, like I said, the, the CS was very clear that they are working towards economic recovery and supporting anyone who's in, playing in that space of recovery. So in that sense, we as private capital providers see it as a chance to showcase how we can work with the government and it's a welcome move. Um, the, the budget statement as was provided to us. Um, so save for the legal concern around regulation and the introduction of the investment securities tax, um, most of, for the most part, it, it's, it's a positive one. Like I said, it was an economic strategy. And for us, who are medium to long-term investors, we like the, those kinds of statements because they allow us to, in our, uh, to, uh, to plan uh, our financial outlook for, for the market. So it worked in our favor and I, I think if they can hold on to their their promises uh, to work with uh, private capital in PPPs, in supporting SMEs and in accelerating growth and en enhancing government efficiencies, uh, especially around payment uh, of debts owed, then I think it would be a very good environment for private capital to thrive. And what about the going um, the continued issue in as far as public debt is concerned i think now we're paying about 55 shillings worth of debt for every 100 uh, raised and yes this was a budget that was focusing on the long-term economic growth which is really underpinned by the vision 2030. does this give you goosebumps or have you factored this in in your investment conversations and investment decisions Escape goosebumps, and that's why I started by pointing out the minimum tax. We acknowledge it's part of the reason why it could be part of the reason why the government is looking to introduce the tax. Um, its debt position is a bit strained. So for us, I mean, it's something that needs to be addressed, and a lot more people need to talk about it. The the fact that probably the debt repayment is not sustainable. Okay continues to be um, a key concern there. Eva, do we, can you still hear me? Okay, so debt sustainability is a continued problem when you're looking at the budget of Kenya. That was Eva Warigia. She is an executive director at the East Africa Venture Capital Fund. And uh, now we have her back here. Maybe Eva, we can just take your, your final comments on okay the budget has been read we have discussed um, the key tenants of this budget with regards to your industry what what's your parting shot what's your closing remark at this point we're definitely heading in uncertain times um if you look at the debt profile of kenya and if you look at the introduction of new laws and introduction of new taxes um it, it's definitely something that would probably be of concern but at the same time there's a little window of progress in that the government is committed to supporting public time uh, focusing on that productivity measure of enhancing efficiency supporting smes introducing uh, partnerships with the PPP, i mean strengthening the relationship for ppp growth and um, leverage on that to grow our revenues with uh, rather than maybe focus on the taxes, which may probably not yield as much as we would hope for, for the long term. Thank you so much, Eva, for your time. That was Eva Warigia, an executive director with the East Africa Venture Capital Association. We have discussed the budget and its impact on the private equity sector. Some of the things coming out are the fact that Treasury wants um, a bit more oversight or increased oversight by the Capital Markets Authority on the private equity sector. 
there's already been an existing relationship with the Retirement Benefits Authority. This is an ongoing conversation. And there's also the, possible, the possibility of an introduction of the investment tax on securities. It's an uncertain time. We are all focusing on uh, trying to just get better in the longer term. But then debt continues to be an issue. Debt is an issue in the private equity space. Debt is an issue in fixed income. It's an issue on equities. It's an issue everywhere. So that coupled with regulatory risk in, in as far as new laws coming on board, new taxes coming on board that you are not even aware of or have planned for are sort of some risk factors as you're looking at the investment case for Kenya. So that was an interesting conversation. I think the takeout is there's a lot of uncertainty. So just be careful as you're making your investments and focus on the long term. That's it from us here at the Markets Today team. See you same time tomorrow. Good day.